Dawn breaks over the summit of Mount Sinai. After 8,000 years at the heart of history, pilgrims gaze over the rugged mountains of the Sinai Peninsula. It is here that Moses is said to have received the Ten Commandments. From space, the 61,000 square kilometer Sinai Peninsula is one of Earth's most distinctive landmarks. The St. Catherine's Protectorate spans 4,320 square kilometers, virtually encompassing the entire high mountain area of South Sinai. This is the peninsula's most diverse region, with elevations ranging between 1,500 and 2,665 meters, providing a climate in which a wide variety of plants and animals can thrive. Sinai is a magical and sacred land, a point of convergence for three great religions. The Monastery of St. Catharines is the oldest Christian monastery with a history of continuous occupation. Today, seven distinct Bedouin tribes inhabit the Protectorate. In and around the town of St. Catherine. They are a conservative people, with a rich culture and a famous reputation for hospitality, who possess a profound knowledge of their land. Over 529 plant species have been identified in the Sinai's high mountains, 33 of which are endemic. Several of these plant species have attracted international interest. At least 47% of the plant species here have medicinal, aromatic, cosmetic or culinary uses. Local Bedouins use many plants to treat a variety of medical disorders. The Medicinal Plants Conservation Project was established by Egyptian Environmental Affairs Agency in 2003 with funding from the Global Environment Facility and the United Nations Development Programme. It aims to examine and eliminate the root causes of the loss of floral biodiversity in the Sinai. Addressing threats to the conservation and sustainable use of globally significant medicinal and aromatic plants, the project focuses on empowering the local Bedouin community to help them use and manage their botanical resources in a sustainable manner. Sheikh Ahmed Mansour, famously known as Hakim Sinna, Sinai's medicine man, has dedicated his life to treating his people with traditional healing recipes using the medicinal plants that flourish in the area. Our grandfathers told us that there were no trees here in Wadi Tla. Then the rain returned and the Wadi became green again. In the old days, there was so much vegetation on the sides of the wadi to the extent that you could not walk through it. Before, there was a stream of water running on the surface of this wadi. Now we have to dig a well six meters into the granite to reach water. Over the years, the Bedouin have inherited this traditional knowledge from our ancestors. We use herbs in our daily life, in preparing our food and for treating many ailments. Sheikh Ahmed founded the Bedouin Medicine School here in Wadi Tala. The Herbalist School was created to conserve this traditional knowledge for future generations. The school started with six students and the first class graduated in 2009 and was honored in a ceremony arranged by the project. The project continues to play a significant role in supporting our rights in our traditional knowledge and resources. 
and has established a national law for access and benefit sharing. By most desert standards, the high mountains of the Sinai are exceptionally well watered, receiving four to ten times the precipitation at sea level. Yet, while cycles of flood and drought alternate, Bedouin traditions still indicate an overall climate of desertification. The project implements a wide range of national surveys to identify current status of the Egyptian flora. It also conducts comprehensive surveys of wild medicinal plants in St. Catherine. Sinai's floral wealth has been enriched by its geological location and long-term changes in climate. Plants found here have their origins in several distinct floral regions. Some of these stranded Asiatic shrubs have perished in their original habitats, yet still survive here, windows to environments of the past. Like the notable pistachio shrub, El Botan, from Asia, growing in the red granite of Shag Tala. More than 50 of these relic species still survive in Sinai's mountains. In such isolation, Many of these floral remnants have gradually evolved into endemics. Amongst them, the rarest of Sinai's plants, the Sinai primrose. Another is the endangered Rosa Arabica, El Ward El Bari, of which only 85 remain in the high mountains. Another, the Rubus Sanctus, revered at the monastery as the burning bush of Exodus. Some of these species are currently under pressure, exerted by the increasing population and tourists visiting St. Catherine. As one of the extensive programs for conserving endemic plant species, the Rehabilitation and Restoration Program provides protection for endemic plant species and critically endangered plants. To this end, Twelve cultivation sites have been established in the St. Catharines Protectorate to domesticate wild medicinal plants as a source of income generation for the local communities. For example, Farag's Fox Desert Camp is a demonstration site with an educational function where visitors can learn how the project's various research efforts yielded methodologies for cultivation of wild medicinal species and how the plants function and thrive. The high altitude, cold, snow and rains are ideal conditions for Central Asiatic alpine plants. Uncultivated mountainous areas display a rich diversity of plant species. One of the most important project programs is the Seed Collection Program, which registers and stores intragenetic plant samples in the National Gene Bank and has established an online herbarium. Many of these fertile soils have already for centuries been cultivated by both monks and Bedouin. Most historic and modern orchards are found in these red granite wadis. An array of plants grow in these cracks and basins. Shrubs including ephedra, the endemic wickweed, hybercum, shai el gabal, the thistle, Kashir, lavender cotton, gaisum, and in a few moist places, mint. The essential oils which grant these shrubs their fragrance deter insects in much the same way as thorns protect other desert plants. Immediately after the annual rains, dormant perennials rapidly revive and germinate. Children play with dab spine seeds, placing them on their tongues, causing them to germinate explosively as they come into contact with the water in their saliva. This rich diversity of flora is perhaps best described by contemporary author Joseph Hobbes, who writes of the Sinai, In floristic terms, 
one walks from Afghanistan to Sahel to the Sahara in the steep eight kilometer descent from the plains of Ar Raha to Sheikh Awad. The community based natural resource management system ensures that local Bedouin have access to all decision making processes concerning the utilization of their medicinal plants. Sharing control over project implementation, evaluation, and benefit distribution. It has introduced for the first time a contractual arrangement between the government and the local communities. Delegating to the users decision making power over the resources they care for and live from. The project concentrates on women as the major asset. The handicraft program which assists Bedouin women in creating marketable handicrafts using their traditional methods and designs. Sophia and Karima are two young Bedouin women who work at the Medicinal Plants Association as permanent full-time employees. احنا دلوقتي من خلال عملنا في الجمعيه بقينا نتخذ القرارات السليمه وبقينا دلوقتي اعضاء مجلس الاداره ودربنا وجهزنا على تعبات النباتات الطبيه بصوره جيده ودلوقتي دربنا على المشغلات اليدويه High quality honey is produced, packed and labelled. These products, along with dried and packaged medicinal plants, are sold at an outlet store supported by the project. Sheikh Akmin Bansour also has a shop selling traditional remedies. The Green School program is increasing awareness amongst teachers, children and their parents of the importance of preserving medicinal plants and their habitats. لأن استفادت منه المرعى والمجتمع المحلي وزي المثل اللي بيقول إذا ساعدتنا للوقوف فأنا أبدأ أمشي. It is hoped that through sound conservation efforts and empowerment initiatives, the Bedouin of Sinai will sustainably utilize their natural resources and continue to pass on their invaluable traditional knowledge for generations to come.